Hello everyone, welcome back to our updated camera series here at Tile Gardens. So picking up from our last video where we talked about camera basics in terms of coral photography, some of you may have been thinking, I use my phone, how in any way does this apply to me? And I'm here to tell you that a professional camera like this Canon 5DSR isn't for everyone. Unless you need professional shots or are a serious camera enthusiast, there are some major drawbacks to a gigantic setup like this one. They're expensive, physically cumbersome to carry around, and can be confusing to operate if this is indeed your first rodeo. Now, with cell phone cameras improving every year, it is no surprise that just about everyone shoots with their smartphone these days. Now, unfortunately, when it comes to shooting a challenging subject like our reef tanks, this smartphone starts to demonstrate why it's not that close to this professional camera. Here at Tidal Gardens, we are pretty serious about image quality, and we will go to crazy lengths to get the shot. This video, though, is all about how to get the best image possible with a cell phone. Just a moment ago, I said that the camera in this cell phone isn't all that close to a professional stills camera like this 5DSR, or a cinema camera like the C200 that I'm using to shoot this right now. The strange thing, though, is if you look at the specs of all three of these things, they sound the same. Cameras can be confusing to shop for because of how companies normally market them. The selling points for the mainstream consumer are things like the megapixel count of their sensor for stills, or the resolution format for video such as full 1080p HD or 4K. You aren't going to get a lot of insight into the color science of the image processor or the bit rate that the video is being recorded at, or even the quality of the lens on the camera. When the marketing is dumbed down, two very different cameras can have the same specs on paper. For example, the cell phone on paper has a lot of the same specs that a serious DSLR has, or even the cinema camera has. But in reality, they are worlds apart, and it shows up big time when it is pushed to the limit with a challenging subject like an aquarium that is a relatively dimly lit subject with crazy light that the phone wasn't optimized for in the first place. I may be sounding like I'm dumping on my poor Samsung here, but I'm totally not. Let's be real. These things are miraculous. If you traveled back in time and pulled one of these out, you would probably be charged for witchcraft. So having said that, let's dive into some tips and tricks on how to improve the images captured with one of these guys when it comes to reef photography. The first major problem phone users run into is how the built-in cameras handle colors. Phone cameras, and I guess, cameras in general, are designed to take good pictures in regular daylight conditions. That's going to be the sweet spot that they are tuned for because that's what people shoot 99.99999% of the time. <laughs> Unfortunately, our tanks aren't part of that 99.999% of the time. We are asking the phone to shoot really dim, weird, artificial light. Especially now with the growing popularity of LEDs, that can be a challenging light to shoot in. Now, here's where the model of the phone you are using is going to make a big difference. Some phones will do a heck of a lot better than others. If we were shooting a scene outdoors, it would be nearly impossible to tell an Android from an iPhone apart. But shooting our tanks, they're gonna look completely different. Some of these photos will actually look like they were made on different planets in some scenarios. And in the worst case scenario, the image is just simply unusable. Unfortunately, there is nothing on the phone spec sheet that is going to tell you that this model is going to do really well with actinic lights and this other model is total garbage. So the first tip is to look at what people are posting online and see how their photos look. Oftentimes they're using a phone and take note of which model they're using if you really like the image. And then when it comes time to upgrade your phone, consider going with that model. The second tip is to consider the lighting fixture you're using. These days, just about any quality lighting fixture can grow coral successfully. Sure, some fixtures will have fancier features than others, and some will color up corals differently than others, but across the board, you can have a successful tank with most commercially available reef lights. Having said that, the lighting fixture is going to have a huge effect on how your photos and videos are going to turn out. Than has said on this channel many times that he likes T5 fluorescent lights for photography more than LEDs. But that in itself might be an oversimplification because new LEDs are coming out all the time and some LED fixtures are pretty good now. The technology has come a long way in the past few years for color rendition. So those two tips, phone selection and light selection, will make the biggest difference in your photos and videos and will always allow you to shoot better in most tank conditions. 
However, I know a lot of people out there really want to shoot their tanks with a super blue actinic look. That is a tough task for any camera, even the professional stuff. And here is where filters can help. When it comes to filters, we actually found that the best option for getting rid of blue aquarium light is these orange tinted glasses we got from Fritz Aquatics. They're actually meant for aquarium lighting, which helps a lot because not only does it get rid of the blue light, but it also filters through UV light to make the colors in the coral really stand out. Now we realize that these glasses are for people, not for cameras. However, just by holding the glasses up to the lens, it'll work the same way it does with your eyes. Just make sure you adjust your settings on your camera to accommodate for the darkness that comes with using the filter. The second best option would be to use a yellow camera lens filter. This filter is specifically made for cameras, but the only problem is it isn't specifically made for reef aquarium lighting. This means that, yes, it does get rid of the pesky blue light that is hard to work with, along with bringing some of the colors from the corals out, but it leaves a weird yellow cast that takes a bit more work to get rid of. So if you can get your hands on filters specifically designed for aquariums, that would be your best option. And then just to see what would happen, we tried a professional grade red and orange filter and none of them performed as well as the free Fritz glasses we gave out at last year's barbecue. Color issues aside, stabilization will help with both photo and video. The less shaky your photo, the more information your camera is able to process. The first way to avoid shaky footage on a phone is to buy a phone tripod. Or if you already have a tripod, getting a phone grip for your tripod will also do nicely. This will prevent any movements to the phone like you would normally get just by using your hands. Another option along with the tripod would be to use voice activated shooting. This is a feature on both iPhone and Android now. However, if you are using older models of iPhone and Android, I cannot guarantee that that will be there. Now, what voice activated shooting does is reduce the shake of the phone when you're touching the screen to take the picture. All you have to say, if you're using an iPhone for instance, is Siri, take a photo. And your camera will open up and take the photo for you. It's just that easy. Tripods and remote shooting is great for stills, but what about video? Video is great for showing depth and dimension of aquascapes or corals that are mostly static. In these cases, moving the camera is a way to introduce motion. The problem here is nothing is quite as shaky as handheld phone video. <laughs> Corals that are static are things like Acropora, the fuzzy sticks that don't really move, and brain corals like Fabia, Lovophilia, Acanthastria, etc. that are monolithic. If you are ready to spend a little bit of money, a three-axis gimbal-based stabilizer for your phone will do a great job. The best one that I've used is the Movi by Freefly. I've used a bunch of other products, like no-name Chinese stuff, a few different DJI models, and while they all work and are a thousand times better than not having one, if you want the best, it's the Movi. Being able to set it down, easiest to balance and use, it has the best app, all around, hands down, it's the best. <laughs> Now, another setback that phone cameras have when being compared with professional grade cameras is the inability to switch out lenses. Most phone cameras are equipped with wide angle lenses, which work great for getting 20 people into a family photo, but not so great for coral photography. At Tidal Gardens, we use macro lenses to get those up close shots of corals while retaining a lot of detail. With phone cameras, the only way to get that close is by zooming in, and that gets rid of a lot of detail, making some parts of your corals look like weird little blobs. However, to combat this, we actually have clip-on macro lenses that we use on the phone camera. It may not be as great as a professional macro lens on a camera, but it still gets the job done better than the default wide-angle lens. Combine that clip-on lens with an aquarium light filter, and you're in good shape. Now, I do realize that this whole video so far has just been me bagging on phone cameras, but there is actually an upside to using phone cameras, believe it or not. And that upside is underwater photography. When it comes to shooting underwater photography with a professional camera, the camera housings used to keep it dry when going underwater can be double the price of the actual camera. So take this $4,000 camera, for example. If we tried to get a housing for this, that would cost us around eight grand. And that's not something we're entirely able to do. 
Luckily, waterproof phone cases are only a small fraction of that price. My lifeproof case was only around $80 and works great underwater. So that's all I have for you guys on phone photography for aquariums. I hope you all can use this information in your day-to-day -day life, and I hope this information also helps better your photos. If you are looking for the basics of reef photography, go ahead and check out our previous reef photography video where I cover the basics of photography and videography when it comes to using more professional grade cameras. Also, make sure to visit our merch store in the link down below. We still have plenty of Tidal Gardens merch to go around and there's always something for everybody. Anyway, that's all for today. Until next time, happy reefing. Do you think if corals could take selfies that they would be called shelfies? I'll see myself out. Are things like megza megzapixel. <laughs>